For all of my young children uh, who are worshiping with us here today, I just want to take a little time and, and, and introduce our Advent wreath lighting and invite you into this time that could be for you and your family, uh, a special time during worship this extended Advent season. Um, we're going we're gonna to journey through seven weeks of Advent this year, and so I have our seven uh, candles here ready to, to uh, mark our waiting and watching. And so if you don't have seven candles ready there at home, I invite you in the next week to spend some time with your families, you go with your moms and dads and find or, or go out and get seven different candles and you can arrange them somehow at, at home there uh, safely and you can you can put some greenery around them or something uh, the unique to New Mexico, um, as something important to your family that, that just kind of holds that together in a space uh, and then each week we'll, we'll light another candle and we'll have a, a, a reading uh, and a little a verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel and then a prayer and so uh, I want this to be a family time for you as well so even if you want to mute me each week when we go here you'll have the resource at home in your home resource and you can just pick a leader uh, and then you can you can say the reading and you can sing this uh, the verse and then you can pray together uh, and then we can continue worship together if you'd like uh, otherwise I would be happy to lead here as well um, but let's spend some time here with this advent wreath lighting today As our nights grow longer and our days grow short, we look on these earthly signs, light and green branches, and remember God's promise to our world. Christ, our light and our hope will come. Listen to the words of Solomon. O God of my ancestors and the Lord of mercy, who have made all things by your word, and by your wisdom have formed humankind to have dominion over the creatures you have made and rule the world in holiness and righteousness and pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give me the wisdom that sits by your throne and do not reject me from among your servants. With you is wisdom. She who knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens and from the throne of your glory. Send her that she may labor at my side and that I may learn what is pleasing to you. God is the source of our life in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. O come, O wisdom from on high, embracing all things far and nigh, in strength and beauty come and stay. Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, 
O Israel. Let us pray. Eternal God, your word of wisdom goes forth and does not return empty. Grant us such knowledge and love of you that we may perceive your presence in all creation and every creature. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is all rising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray, and watch, and wrestle, at midnight comes the cry. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Go forth as he approaches with hallelujahs clear. The marriage feast is waiting, the gates wide open stand. Arise, O eyes of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. The saints who hear in patience their cross and sufferings bore shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. All round the throne of glory a lamb they shall behold. In triumph cast before them the diadems of gold. Our hope and expectation, O Jesus, now appear. Arise, O sun, so long for, for this benighted sphere. With hearts and hands uplifted, we plead, O Lord, to see the day of earth's redemption that sets your people free. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, 
you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came along also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, you are wisdom. The O antiphons have been used by the church since at least the 8th century, so quite some time. But don't let the Greek turn you off. Learn and grow. Uh, enjoy. It literally means to sound back. Uh, sometimes they're called the seven sentences. And there are um, seven of them. And, and we recognize them from the familiar Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. They traditionally are sung and reflected upon during evening prayer, starting on December 17th, uh, on the days leading then into Christmas. In Greek, they each begin with O, and come from one of the titles commonly ascribed to Jesus, drawn from the book of Isaiah. We are going to use the O antiphons to guide our journey through this expanded Advent season. Through this lens, we will engage the lectionary texts of those weeks that look to the end, to the fulfillment of the paschal mystery of Jesus passing over from death to life. That is, for us and for our salvation. And so we begin our extended Advent season with the antiphon, O Wisdom. 
And thanks to Sharon Halstead for uh, opening our worship with this antiphon as she sang for us as we gathered here around God's presence and in God's presence. Remember it here with me. O come, O come, O come, O wisdom from on high, embracing all things far and nigh. In strength and beauty come and stay. Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Wisdom is a word ascribed often to God the Holy Spirit. And given the female pronoun, you heard it in the Advent wreath lighting and the reading from uh, the Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom is both the giver and the gift. How about that for an amazing aspect of God? Wisdom is both the giver and wisdom is the gift. And so we pray for wisdom to discern the will of God, to live ready for the coming of Jesus. We proclaim in faith that Jesus, the Word of God, is the embodiment of divine wisdom. And so it makes sense then that we we pay attention to the words and the actions of Jesus when he tells us about the kingdom of God, the world as God intends, the way it will be then at the the fulfillment of all time. The end times is what it's commonly called. Today's wisdom comes in the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Uh, in, the, in this end time discourse, Jesus starts, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Uh, this is the, the general um, uh, way that, that the Gospel of Matthew talks about uh, the reign of God. So the kingdom of heaven will be like this. And they, they tell this, this story of, the, of how the foolish took their lamps with no oil uh, to go and meet the bridegroom. Um, The wise ones, they took flasks of oil along with them in case the oil of their lamps ran out. Uh, There was a delay. There was a delay in the bridegroom coming. And all of them went to sleep. Well, when they were awakened unexpectedly with a shout at the bridegroom's arrival, the lamps had gone out, don't you know? And so the foolish had to go buy oil. They missed the arrival. They were shut out of the wedding banquet. And here then Jesus imparts wisdom. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus is teaching his disciples, um, Jesus is teaching the church uh, to live life ready for God. Jesus was not imploring them to stay awake all night, fretting over when and how the fulfillment of all time will come. Note that it came at the same time for all of them in the parable, and at the time all of them were sleeping. The difference was in the preparedness the active living, um, the active faithful living of the oil flask bringing bridesmaids, they were all bridesmaids after all, is what set them apart as wise in the parable. And conversely, the unprepared lamp only bridesmaids were foolish. It's impossible to ignore the harsh tone of rejection at the end of the parable. And if that makes you happy, it shouldn't. If it makes you anxious or fearful, Let's seek the gift of wisdom as we, as we look at this parable through our antiphon for today. The center call of the parable is to, our, is to our responsiveness to God's grace through, the li- through lives of love and mercy in our present living, in our present moment. This is the preparedness to enter into the wedding banquet, the term used in the parable to to describe the eternal glory uh, at the fulfillment of all time. And so the call is to active lives of love and mercy, and it's made clear by the the, the opposite, by those foolish bridesmaids who, who show no urgency whatsoever in preparing for the Lord's coming and being ready for the Lord's coming. Oh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll start showing love and mercy tomorrow, maybe. 
Well, it doesn't matter how I treat others because I call myself a Christian and therefore God is going to come and take me away from this world. It's not Jesus is coming, look busy. It's Jesus is coming, be ready. Be ready. Be ready by loving and caring for your neighbor. Be ready by showing mercy to the stranger. Be ready by always seeking the wisdom of God in prayer, in worship, in devotion, in faithfulness. And then doing it. These weeks between the festivals of all saints and Christmas can be challenging with all of the scripture readings about the end times or as I like to call it, the, full, the fullness of all time. Some of the challenge is from the blatant consequences of the parables for those not ready. This sort of judgment can be hard for our ears to hear, especially when we like to read ourselves so much into the parables. And depending on your self-thought for the moment, are either you are part of the in crowd, and then you can become kind of comfortable and proud, and then interestingly not prepared for Jesus' return, I think, at all. Or uh, on the outside, and then scared to death of God. But some of, the, some of the challenge, too, comes from the stark self-reflection, then, that these parables demand of us. We'd much prefer to hear how much God loves us and our work is really inconsequential to my salvation. Saved by grace through faith, we Lutherans love to rightly remember. But these Advent texts about the coming of our Lord make us really stop and consider intentionally how our lives are reflecting the love and mercy of God in our everyday life, in our active, faithful living. And this is why we, we sing and we pray to God, to wisdom, come, come. The truth is that, lo that, is that love and mercy are urgent in our present moment. And that active lives of love and mercy keeps the end times in a perspective that doesn't then have to elicit panic or anxiety as we live the love and mercy of God. And when we en are engaged in loving and, uh, others and showing the mercy of God, we are doing the will of God and therefore we're ready. We're ready if Jesus does return suddenly and unexpectedly. And if this doesn't happen in our lifetime, this side of heaven, well, we've made this world a little more like the kingdom of heaven in sharing the love and mercy of God that Jesus calls us to do uh, and shares with us in these stories. For this is the way of Jesus, love and mercy, the wisdom and the will of God in this time as it is in the fullness of all time whenever that is. Thanks be to God. Amen. All of creation, all of the earth, Make straight a highway, path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saint. Let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon. for you. Every heart longing for a king, we sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. There will be justice all will be new, your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Oh.
So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you're coming soon. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you're coming soon. Like a bride waiting for a groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Holy Creator, Surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world, reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. We pray for Bill, Pat, Linda, David, Nick, John, Sherry, Jeff, Karen, Kathy, Wendy, Carol, Dante, Carmine, Bobby, Bill and Jam, Dolores, Harry, Robert, Norma, Ruth, D, Cap, Karis, Tony, Kay, Joel, Ian, and all those we name now aloud or in silence. Be near to those who grieve, Ron Worth and family, at the breath, death of his brother Keith. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for blessing and gift of relationship and for our partners in ministry, our school ministry, Family Promise, Operation 505, Compassion Beyond Borders, Luther House, Lutheran Family Services, Lutheran Advocacy Ministry, Holy Love Lutheran Church, Aurora, Colorado, and Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church, Lakewood, Colorado. Hear us, O God. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. 
comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Holy and Immortal One, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and the shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. I invite you into this time of offering. Please know how grateful we are for your continued giving through the ministries of Cross of Hope. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer now, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. One day when heaven was filled with his praises One day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin Dwelt among men, my example is he Word became flesh and light shined among us His glory Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. And that he nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for. Freely forever One day he's coming Oh glorious day Oh glorious day One day the grave could conceal him no longer One day the stone rolled away from the door Then he Grave could not keep him from rising again. Rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's calling on for me.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We rejoice and celebrate the gift of life today, uh, the celebrating the birthdays of Ron Cordova and Marcella Johnson. Happy birthday to both of you, and I uh, hope that you'll get a chance to wish them uh, a special day today. Um, we'll continue in com- with communion. We'll have walk-up communion between 10 and 11 if you want to come uh, at the end of our digital worship for a brief time of community gathered around God's table. And we have a lot of opportunities this week to um, uh, be is supporting our school ministry and our family promise ministry. Uh, first on um, Tuesday of this week uh, for our community health. We'll have a flu shot clinic here at Cross of Hope on Tuesday, uh, November 10th between 2 and 4. You can find information and you're in your hope filled happenings on page seven. Uh, the whole community is invited to come uh, w- to our flu shot clinic. And then on Thursday, all day, it will be a fundraiser at Twisters. So if you like Twisters, uh, grab some food to go and uh, continue uh, to support our school ministry through that fundraiser. Uh, and then Family Promise has their fill and bless the home donation day on Saturday this week, November 14th, between 10 and noon. So if you want to come on down with your donation items, you can find information on those items on page three of our Hope Filled Happenings. Um, w- w- there's a virtual book fair as well. Scholastic won't be on site this year due to the pandemic, but we can go online uh, and buy books for your uh, family members if you'd like, and some of those proceeds, as always, go to support our school ministry. So lots of ways to continue in community as we journey together through the, this time of pandemic, as we continue to learn and grow together in life and faith. I'll invite you to receive now God's blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. In the breakers, the storm my faith, God my rock and God my hope, you will prevail. You're the constant in a sea of change, what you've done and what you said will never change. What you've done and what you said will never change. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness always and forever. Always and forever. Seize my heart, but the never still will tear a love apart. There are victories yet to come, they are certain as the rising of the sun. They are certain as the rising of the sun. Great is your faithfulness, great is your faithfulness always and forever, always and forever, from age to age. 
As we gather here through space and time at God's table, we give thanks to God for Jesus, his Son, our Lord. And I'll invite you into this time of communion, sharing the words of institution as you find in your home resource. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the world. From the earth you give us bread to eat. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Through your goodness you give us the fruit of the vine. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. We are gathered together by God and in God, and so we boldly pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, taste and see God's sustaining love for you. Uh, As you can, then, uh, share the body and blood of Christ with each other and the words body of Christ given or broken for you, blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life forever. 
In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you now and always. Let us go now in peace.